Amen. Let's have a short moment of prayer before we begin. I'll put you in front, in front of my melody. You are all that matters. You are all that matters. I'll make room for two. You and I, Jesus, you are all that matters, you are all that matters, oh, hey, oh, hey. you are all that matters, oh, hey, oh, hey. you are all children are gathered today to hear from you father lord we pray that you speak oh god speak your true word speak your truth unto us oh god let it not be my thought i'm just a mere sinner oh god but i pray that you use me just as you use that samaritan woman to preach unto the samaritans tell them come and see father lord speak through me this morning and bring souls unto you in the mighty name of jesus we have prayed amen Thank you, choir. Amen? Amen? It is always a pleasure to share the word of God with you. And uh, I salute all our members who are here. God bless you all for making it. Uh, those who are not here, those who are watching us online, uh, those who have traveled, uh, our senior pastor, we miss you, we love you. Um, it is hard to fill the shoes, but with God's help, uh, I pray that I'll be able to deliver the message just as God has given it to me. Amen. Amen. So I titled my message today, We Have Jesus. Amen. We Have Everything. Amen. 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 And the verse that I use as my main verse is in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26 says, But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen. And it might not make sense, but as we go along, just follow me. Amen. Amen. So we start today by reading Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Matthew 13, 44. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And in his joy, he went and sold all he had and bought that field. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. When a man found it, he hid it. And in his joy, he went away and sold everything that he had and came and bought it. Amen. So when I read this, I began to wonder. Why would God make the analogy that something that is free, salvation that is free, Jesus Christ that is free, someone had to go and sell all that he had in order to come and then buy it. Amen. Amen. It also brought me to when that young rich man came to Jesus Christ and said, oh, what will I do to be saved? 
And Jesus Christ told him, go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. And it dawned upon me that it is not about what you are selling to get something, but it's about the value that you put on the kingdom of God. Amen. What you are trading off, what you are giving up in order to get it, it is what makes all the difference. Amen. So the kingdom of God, it is so important that people have to give everything that they had in order to get it. The reason why you have to give up everything that you have in order to get it, it is because the kingdom of God is everything. It is because Jesus Christ is everything. People like Peter, they realize that Jesus Christ was everything. That is why they left behind their trade. Peter was a simple fisherman, someone who was illiterate. But he left all that behind to follow Jesus Christ. Amen. And when you read the story of Peter, you begin to wonder how someone as simple as Peter, God will raise him up to such a prominence in his nation. It is because he understood that in order to have everything, you have to give up everything. What makes me understand what Peter was going through is that when Jesus Christ was killed, Peter decided, I'm going to go back to fishing. That's when I, I was thinking, oh, this guy, he was suffering financially. That's why he went back. Amen? So he was following Jesus all this while, expecting something. And Jesus Christ was crucified and buried. And now they can't even find his body. So he went back to fishing so that he can make a living. But Jesus Christ came back to drag him. And from there on, you start to look at the life of Peter, who was a simple fisherman. Christ made him a fisher of men. And today, we from every part of the world, some of us from uh, Africa, a nation that was not known before, we know about the man called Peter. But he was just a simple fisherman. But because he understood that he had to give up everything in order to get everything, which is Jesus Christ, God has made him someone that we can read about and learn from. Amen. Amen. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 to 18, let us all read Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 to 18. It says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Verse 15 says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. The first 16 is what amazes me. It says, for by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominion, whether principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. Amen. Amen. Verse 18 says, and he is the head of the body, the church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Amen. Amen. Everything was created through Jesus Christ. And not just that, they were created for him. Amen. So outside of Jesus Christ, there is nothing else. That's why you see people, they have acquired a lot of money, but still they can't make sense of their lives. That is why you hear of suicide among people who you would think they are better off. It is because they can't make sense of their lives. Everything is through Jesus Christ. That is how you get everything. That is how you get salvation. That's how you get deliverance. That's how you get the peace of mind. Amen. Amen. Outside of Jesus Christ, there is nothing else. The Bible says that it is in him that we live and that we move, that we have all our being. 
And when you think about the parable that Jesus gave about Lazarus and the rich man, that is where you realize that actually it was the rich man who was poor because he didn't have anything. But Lazarus was the rich one because he had God, he had Jesus Christ. That is why in the afterlife, Lazarus was in a better place and the rich man was the one asking from him. Amen. So if in your mind, it is getting money, it is getting education, it's getting a better job, that, that will make you have everything, you are wrong. Let me tell you that you are wrong. Because it doesn't just end there. It doesn't just end the day you die and the, the, the inheritance that you leave for your children. It doesn't end there. But you are an eternal soul. Amen? And those who don't have Jesus Christ, it is them who don't have anything. But we who have Jesus Christ, we have everything. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, your socially distanced neighbor, we have Jesus we have everything. I was talking about Peter just right now. And let's go to this story in Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. Amen? That is what I'm saying. In our minds, having something, it is having silver and gold. It is having jewelries. It's having houses. It's having cars. It's having the ability to do so much. But like I said, Peter was just a simple man. He didn't have anything. But because he had Jesus Christ, he had everything. So this man was receiving money from people. It's the same way we see people um, at red lights asking, hungry, please help. And Peter is like, look at us. And the person thought, oh, maybe he was going to give us something. And he said, silver and gold I do not have. If I was that lame man, I would be like, you don't have anything. So then why are you asking me to look at you? <laughs> and that's how our society is. We don't look at people who don't have anything. If you are broke, nobody listens to you. But let me tell you, if you have Jesus and you are broke, you have everything. Amen. 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 So Peter told him, silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give you. And probably he was expecting something different than gold and silver. Something maybe valuable, maybe clothes, maybe something that I can sell to earn money. But all Peter had was a powerful name, amen? amen. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. This man thought he needed money. He thought he needed gold and silver. But what he didn't know he needed was to be able to walk. Amen? Amen. But the, the, the powerful thing about the name of Jesus, the powerful thing about the man Jesus that we have, the powerful thing about the God that we have is that with that only name, you can cash in any check. Amen? Amen. Amen. At times, it is for healing. At times, it's for deliverance. At times, it's for salvation. But it is that only one tool that we have. That at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So whatever situation you are facing, if you have the name of Jesus Christ, you have everything you need. People use this expression that 
Oh, he's a jack of all trade, but master of none. Amen? Amen. And usually when human beings create things, and it is a tool that has multi multiple use, it can't effectively work on any task. Amen? Amen? Example, if you take a doctor, a general doctor can touch up everything, right? But at some point, he will tell you, you need to see a specialist. Amen? But our Jesus Christ that we have, the God that we worship, is the jack of all trade and master of all. Amen? Amen? Every situation you apply the name of Jesus to, there is always a result if you have the faith. People did not just get salvation when they met Jesus Christ. Some people got their son revived. In Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 17, there was this widow that was going to bury her only son that was left. And the people around her were just crying with her. Oh, sorry, oh, he's gone. Oh, what can we do? God has given, God has taken. And sometimes that's all men can do for you when you are in certain situations. Sometimes God will even make it so that people who you are supposed to hear you out when you are having issues, they won't care. Amen? Amen. But sometimes it's because God wants you to come to him. He's the best therapist you can ever have. Amen? Amen. He's the best therapist that you can ever have. Sometimes you don't need to go to friends and, and family and complain about your issue. What you need to do is to get into your room, get on your knees, and cry to God. That's where you get the result. So this woman, she was going, and she was crying because she was a widow, the Bible said. So the husband died, and the only son is also dead now. In our culture, it is said that parents do not bury their children. It is the children that bury their parents. But now this woman is supposed to be alone and bury her son. But thankful to God that someone was alive and going around the earth at that time whose name was called Jesus. And when Jesus came and met these people, he touched the beer. And the people who were carrying the son stopped. And what did Jesus say? Jesus told the woman, don't cry. And Jesus spoke to the dead person and said, young man, I say to you, get up. And the dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Amen. There is no situation that is way gone, too far gone that Jesus cannot fix. Amen. There is no situation that is too far gone that Jesus cannot fix. When you have issues with your electronics sometimes and you go to every repair shop and they can't fix it, what is the last, the last resort you go to? The manufacturer, right? If you have an iPhone and you can't figure out what is going on with it, you bring it to this shop, they can't fix it. You bring it to this shop, they can't fix it. At last, if you bring it to the factory, the maker of the iPhone, they will find you a solution. Amen? Amen? It is the same thing with Jesus Christ. He made us all. He created this whole world and everything that is within it. So when you have a situation, when you have a problem that you cannot fix on your own, a problem that people cannot fix for you, a problem that people cannot help you with, and you bring it to the creator, the maker of it all you will always find solution. Amen. Amen. So when this kid was dead and they met the creator of that kid, he raised him back alive. So I just came here to remind you that if you have Jesus, you have everything. No matter what the situation is, when you go to him and you ask him in faith, you shall receive. Except he was not the one who created you, then he cannot fix you. If you don't believe Jesus Christ can fix your problem, if you don't believe Jesus Christ can solve what you are going through, 
It means that you are thinking he was not the one who created you. Sometimes we say, oh, this is not even my own doing. No. This is not a man's doing. No. This is the devil's work. Who created the devil? So who can solve all the problems that the devil creates? Like I said, he is the jack of all trade and the master of all. Sometimes we go through things in life or we do things in life and we think, oh, this is my own doing. And we don't actually see the hand of God in doing it. But when it comes to the impossible, when it comes to things that we cannot do on our own, that is when we see the power of God. God can do the, those that are possible, but he can also do the things that are impossible to men. That's why he says to man, it is impossible. But to God, all things are possible. So why not bring every issue to him? Why not bring every burden to him? Why not bring every, every situation, every challenge you are facing to him? Because if you have Jesus... You have everything. Joshua in the Old Testament, he was fighting a battle. And he had the upper hand. But the sun was going down. So he thought, if we leave this battle into the night, we might not win or this battle might drag on. So he called out to the God Almighty, the creator of the heaven and the earth, the one who created the sun. He called out to him and said, God, let the sun stand still until I finish what I'm doing. We have a God who has a track record of bending the rules in favor of his own people. God created the sun to rise up in the morning and to go down at night. But when Joshua called out to him and said, God, I need you to make the sun stand still, God made it happen. So what makes you think that the situation you are in, God cannot bend the rules for you? If you have Jesus, you have everything. At the wedding in Cana, these people were out of wine. And... In some cultures around the world, it will be very shameful for people to come to your event, your wedding, your uh, baby shower, your uh, whatever it is that they came to, and they ran out of food. So some people didn't get to eat, and the food is finished. And chemistry will tell us you cannot have wine just from water. But... God blessed these people at Cana that they had Jesus Christ as a guest to their wedding. So he asked them, just pour water into those, those containers. And he turned the water into wine. So he took away their shame in that situation. Sometimes you have to get into a desperate situation where you feel like you don't have any power. For you to be able to recognize who can take you, who can uh, make you, who can help you, who can lift you up out of that situation. Amen. That is why when we encounter situations where we feel desperate, when it feels impossible, it is not the time to give up. It is actually the time that God is making an opportunity. God is giving an opening. God is opening the door to be able to do something in your lives. So when you are facing adversity, when you are facing difficulties in life, it is just an opportunity for God to do something. Amen? A singer called him impossibility specialist. Amen? God specializes in impossibilities. The things that men say, it cannot happen. It cannot be done. That is what God does. They will tell you, oh, when you are over 45, you cannot have a child anymore. Or 
Oh, the pregnancy will be hard. Uh, you are risking to lose your lives. Um, this and that. But our God is the God of impossibilities. That is why Sarah, even at her age, was able to bring up the son of the promise. Amen. Some people are dealing with hunger right now. Those who are watching us online. People who are going through difficulties. If the God that we serve was able to feed his prophet Elijah for an extended period of time and have ravens bring to him meat and bread, what can he not do? What situation can he not solve? If he can bend the rules of nature just to help his people, what can he not do? That is why I am telling you that if you have Jesus, you have everything. The people out there want to tell us that we are crazy because we believe in someone who is dead. But I want to tell them that I have everything because I have Jesus Christ. Because I can call up to him in every situation I find myself in. And he will be able to rescue me. He will be able to save me. When people get diagnosed with cancer, they tell them, oh, this is the prognosis. We are going to try this. We are going to try that. But you have to hope to God that it works. But we have heard testimonies of people who were diagnosed with cancer at first. And then they went back and they came back and said, yeah, it has disappeared. Who do you think does those things? It's definitely not your body. It's definitely not the, the medicines you are receiving. Science can only tell you how God is making it to a certain extent. But God is the one who actually does it. God doesn't need to go into a lab and to have studies before he finds a cure to situations. He can just talk straight and it will happen. The man spit on the floor and then made mud from it and put it on someone's eyes and the person start, started to see. It just shows you that he is the one who made human beings. Just like the Bible said in Genesis. He made him from dirt. So he was doing the same thing again on the earth so that people can see. This is not uh, some medicine. This is not some herbs. This is not uh, some secret recipe. No, he did it right in front of them to show them. I am the one who made everything. That is why you have to know. That you who have Jesus, you are blessed because you have everything. There is not supposed to be any situation where you find yourself and you are desperate. There is not supposed to be any situation where you find yourself and you lose hope. Because the God who has done it before, the Bible tells me he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed one bit. He can do it all over again. If God is the one who created you, he can certainly fix you up. Amen? So I just came to you with this very simple message. That if you have Jesus Christ, you have everything. Sometimes everything might not be the physical things you are thinking about. Sometimes everything might not be having the financial security that you think you deserve. Sometimes everything might not be being in the position that you think you have to be in. Sometimes having everything just means that your soul will be saved no matter what. That is why Job, in his book, the chapter 19, verse 26, he says that, And after my skin has been destroyed, Yet in my flesh I shall see God. So at the end of the day, if you have Jesus Christ and you did not attain the position that you wanted to have in life, it is not the end of it. There is a second leg. There is extra time. And that is where us who have Jesus and have trusted in him from the beginning and have held on to our faith, that's where we get our reward. And the people who are running around today saying there is no God. Oh, those people who believe in Jesus Christ are crazy. That's when they will get, also get their reward. And they will 
come to the understanding that they did not have anything on this earth. We were the one who have everything. So just be encouraging your situation today. You who are watching us online, if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, this is the time to do it. Get on the train, get on the wagon. Because we that have Jesus Christ, we have everything. And I'm challenging everyone out there who thinks that Jesus Christ is not real to experience him. Amen? Your salvation he can give. Your healing he can give. Deliverance he can give. Everything that you need, he can give. Because he is the creator of everything. And I end up with the verse that I started with in Matthew chapter, 20, uh, chapter 19 verse 26 that says, With men, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. God bless you all.